are a big group of researchers and the project is funded by the FWF. And I'm, oh, sorry, here are the buttons. Okay, so, and our research project is, so it's very interdisciplinary and we are trying to combine, as the project title says, it's uh, fashion and robotics. And we also try to combine it with uh, microbiology. Um, at this point, I also want to thank uh, Susan Lee, who brought uh, kombucha to the fashion community back in 2004, and uh, to all the scientists who bring light to the so-called microbial dark matter. So um, the research goal is to bring a fashion design from 2D to 3D with the help of digital tools. Um, so what you see here in this picture is a bacterial cellulose textile. So we are working with the bacterial strain Comagetabacter xylinus. This is a cellulose producing strain, uh, which needs basically sugar and oxygen to grow. It grows on the surface of a liquid static culture. And over the course of 10 to 30 days, uh, this pellicle, which you can see here on the image, is grown. This is already dried and post-processed. And I want to thank uh, Agnes Witt and Werner Baumgartner, who we are cooperating with. They are from the Johannes Kepler University, from the biomedical department, and they did some research on how we can treat this cellulose fiber, because if you don't treat it, you just get like a paper, basically. And they figured out that we could use magnesium chloride, which is not harmful to the environment or to the wearer, to treat it, and it attracts the water molecules from the surrounding environment to make it more flexible and to have like this uh, foldable and flexible textile haptics. So that is how it looks in the lab. And yeah, you can see on the left side, the mother culture in the incubator. So, and everything we do is we put liquids into other liquids, basically. <laughs> And yeah, if you have questions on how to do that, uh, I I can answer them afterwards. So yeah, that's how it looks in the lab. Um, and before we were able to come tackle the three D issue, um, we did some basic research. So we did coloring. We tried to add. Um, color harvested from kitchen waste inside the nutrition liquid. So the color grows into the pellicle. But unfortunately, this technique is not lasting at all. So um, it washes out immediately. And what we did, we then combined the coloring with the post-treatment from the magnesium chloride and also, we added another step of more denting to the fabric to prepare the fabric to soak up as much color as possible and to get vibrant colors and long lasting ones. So here you can see uh, one of our first experiments combined with uh, industrial robotic arm. Um, in this case, we scanned the mannequin, or actually my colleagues scanned the mannequin, and then they cut it along our three-dimensional curve. And here you can see, unfortunately, this is a failed experiment. So we prepared an agar plate or a nutrition plate for the bacteria. 
and we thought with the structure of the molded blade that the water or the bacteria could stay in one spot and that's how we could maybe control uh, the growth of the bacteria. Unfortunately, this structure you can see on the image was a little bit too big to keep the water in place. So it should be a nanostructure like a lotus leaf, for example. So, and this is another um, really interesting experiment because there had been something which wasn't planned. So um, we basically, the idea of the experiment was to have a 3D print and let the bacteria grow around the 3D print. So we had this negative mold uh, because our, um, cutting the material after post-processing is, um, it, it ruptures very easily. And um, the good thing is, yeah, when the bacteria, so to say, grow a hole, it's long lasting. And what happened here, so the bacteria grows in layers and we took out the mold and pressed it back down. And also the first layer of the bacteria um, was underneath the surface area and it formed, so it grew together. The two layers uh, were forming a hole where you can see it's like, that happened. It was not on purpose, and there was even a hole for the thumb. So that was quite nice. Um, and this was another approach to somehow get to th the third dimension or to mold something. So here we um, added a PLA, like a recycled PLA filament. We 3D printed it with the robot, and a uh, we placed it into a big petri dish while growing. So the PLA was completely grown over by the bacterial cellulose. And after that, we, um, so because you always have to sterilize to end the process of growing. And you do that by 120 degrees Celsius. And we put also we put the whole pellicle with the filament in there and afterwards we were able to thermal mold uh, this structure so and this is basically the the a slide where the fun started for us so um while cleaning uh <laughs> this glass broth i was able to find a thread and this was because normally it just grows on the surface of the liquid. And this thread was found in the silicon fusing of the gla uh, a glass broth. So that made us thinking that silicon could maybe be air permeable. And uh, yeah, then we did some research and we found a really good answer in the medical research so they are already doing it since quite a long time they are have they're having the silicon molds and they're growing blood vessels with it so and also the background image shows the thread under a microscope it's not really high resolution but yeah and so we thought okay they are doing blood vessels with silicon tubes let's do a tiny trousers a tiny silicon trousers and fill it up with the nutritional liquid and the bacteria so unfortunately that did not work out as we thought and uh, here is this exhibition set up at the Ars Electronica Center in Linz um, yeah and my dear colleague Emanuel Golub had the great idea that we could maybe use a textile instead of the silicon. So, and you see here, the first picture you see, that's mold. So that unfortunately happens a lot, but in this case, it was really nice because the mold was not inside of the trousers. So this, what you see here, the yellow thing is what we call a membrane 
in the paper. Um, yeah, you also can see that the seams are not yet perfect and not perfectly grown together, but there is there is a lot of potential that they could last longer. So, and because we had such a thrilling time with these tiny pants, we decided to make bigger molds. We, we like to call the yellow things blobs. Um, and unfortunately we have, a, in this case, we also had a setup in Helsingborg at the expo and to the robot there was mounted a ultrasonic device to capture the growth activity of the bacteria. So, but unfortunately to uh, very high temperatures, we were not able to harvest a normal sized garment. So it still this scalability issue is teasing us a little bit, I would say. Here we see a rendering basically from CLO 3D, um, what the shapes would have looked like, what we saw as a, the, the blob shapes we saw before in the image. So, um, yes. Yes, and then we thought, okay, how could we incorporate robotics into this blob process? And as you know, so the membrane, so the bacteria need oxygen to grow, to produce what we want. And the membrane, of course, it lets air pass through, but it could be more. So it slows, the membrane slows down the process of growing. And then we decided, okay, we I put a very, very thin needle. I'm not sure if you can even see it in this picture, but a very thin needle to punctuate the membrane to add more oxygen flow or more air flow at specific points to be able to program uh, the fabric qualities. I like to say, okay, for example, we have a seam and the seam should be very strong. Okay, we need exactly there, we need more air to have healthier bacteria growth there. So unfortunately what it did is it really punctuated the materials and it has now seven holes in it. It's not that bad, but here you can see the final product is, um, probably 20 by 15 centimeters. So it's also again, very, very tiny. And it only grew for 10 days. There's another example, but I have to be honest with you. I gave it as a present to Werner Baumgartner from the Biomedical Institute, because this one was really big. It, it was just super nice and we were so excited and he was excited and I gifted him. So, yeah, that is that. And how are we continuing with this research since the membrane technology is probably not the best and not the most sustainable solution for what we want? Um, is So this is how we want to continue the research. So since this week, um, I have this KUKA cobot under the lab bench. And some years ago, we uh, did examples with, where we added knitted structure, uh, cotton-based thread, and in different densities. So, and depending on the ribbon size and the density, the material either grows on top. Uh, or inside and completely fuses with it. So we are planning to have a dipping process with the robot to be able to dip into the nutrition liquid and then remove the pre-knitted garment to add, uh, to be able to add air, enough air to, so the bacteria produces the cellulose and go back, dip in, get some nutrition and so forth. So 
that's what we are planning as our next step. And I want to take the chance and say thank you to Emmanuel and Christiane, and of course to Victor, Michael, Katharina, Agnes, Werner. Uh, it's a blast to work with you. Okay, thank you for your attention.